and welcome everyone to World Vegan Vision Mumbai and its first online conference in 2021. My name is Ruchika Chitrabhanu and I warmly welcome you all today for the series of Awakening Souls. World Vegan Vision is a global non-profit organization based in New York, USA founded by Harshad Shah and his wife Malti Shah. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> it's a beautiful platform uh, that I have been in uh, to express uh, some of the passions of my life and life is uh, all about passions. Uh, if there are no passions, there is no life. Uh, for me, these are the two biggest uh, passions. Uh, one is uh, veganism and another is spirituality. So here with, I would like to share my experience in those two fields. And uh, maybe uh, I can share some of my joy uh, with you in both the fields. My as a physician, my life revolves uh, around my patients. Uh, for many years, uh, almost 20 plus years, uh, I had been paying more attention to my patients. You know, they would come and tell me, say, doc, we know what you're telling me. We know what to do, but we cannot do it. And it, that question kind of centered around, and it was a question that was like burning me from within. I said, why not? If the mind knows what to do, why can't it do it? I didn't have a simple answer. So little by little, as I was exploring, uh, I bumped into uh, spirituality, read uh, Bhagavad Gita by Chinmanand, and somehow it transformed me. And I realized that as a physician, I thought I knew everything. But after reading Gita, I realized I didn't know anything, let alone change the mind and go beyond the mind and all those things. So I really got into spirituality. And then I realized uh, that going beyond the mind is the answer to fix the problems of the mind. But saying it was easy, but doing was very difficult. So my purpose revolved around my patients. But the spiritual liberation is what my topic is about. Veganism and the spiritual liberation. What is spiritual liberation? Yeah. Spiritual liberation is going beyond your mind. Why do you want to go beyond your mind? Because as your mind stands, mind is filled with so many notions, so many beliefs, so many ideas, so many convictions, so many wrong perceptions. And all of that is thrown to you by the sansar, by the world, by the society, including even your name was given to you by someone else and you believe it. Our problem is that we accept whatever the world throws at you. Some of the things are practical, of course, like your name is important to run around in the society and to be recognized, yes. But at the same time, a lot of things we pick up which are not essential and actually detrimental, not only to our health. So I realize people, my patients will be going to the parties exchanging information with their friends. And they say, okay, come on guy, try this. This is a good drink. And I'm sure they are grabbing it. And before you know, they start having pleasure out of that drink. And then that becomes a truth for them that this drink is good for you. So this is how our mind is filled with all these truths that we call them truths. These are perceived notions. They are not truths. They are truth because we believe in them. We believe by believing it again and again and again, we are creating artificial truths in our own mind. You are born and your parents say, okay, you are a Jain. Okay, so we accept that I'm a Jain. We never question, why am I a Jain? What is it to be a Jain? What is involved to be a Jain? Why can't I know what is Jainism or Hinduism or Christianity or Muslim? It doesn't matter, but it is thrown onto us by the society and then we go on. We never ask ourselves second time that I have no doubt about it, I accepted it. So these kind of fake truths believe by. 
And these fake truths really don't have any balance. They are like floating in the air. They don't have any substantial uh, truth behind it. And, and sometimes you live your whole life with these so-called truths till you die. And we realize that we never realized what is beyond that. So that is the spiritual liberation. The liberation is to go beyond your mind, which is nothing but a collection of perceptions, ideas, and per perceived notions that you would want to go beyond and explore what is beyond all these things. But that's where the problem is because to go beyond the mind is not easy because we are so deeply rooted in our, our own uh, perceived notions that we don't even want to go beyond that because it's very comfortable. When you are surrounded by 500 people believing the same thing, you don't see any need to go beyond that. Some kind of restlessness is needed to understand where the problem is with the mind. So I'll give you an example. One time I was practicing and one, of, one couple came to see me. And elderly couple, from their appearance, I could tell they were very relig religious. And uh, the wife was a little bit uh, heavy set and she was already on cholesterol medication. And the blood work actually showed that it's cholesterol was still high. So I asked her, uh, I said, are you taking your medications? He says, yes, doctor. I take my medications very regularly. Uh, every night I take it with a glass of milk. I said, why with glass of milk? He says, well, because it, it, the pill may be very strong. So this milk will kind of soothe my stomach. I said, you realize that if that single habit of yours, if you give up, and not drink the milk, maybe you may not even need the pill. Most of your cholesterol is probably coming from milk because I know she was not a meat eater. She was coming from a religious background, a religion which is famous for, for not consuming any meat and all that. So I, I told her, but she says, but our religion tells you the milk is good for you. There you go. So your facts, her fact came from some other entity and was, she was told, that milk is good for her. Now she never had a, really raised any doubt about herself as to why milk is good for me. Is there any other options? Nothing. So we perceived all these notions and we hold on to this. And mind is a collection. So over the period of all these years, we collect all this information that becomes like a tangled, like woods in our mind with the branches and wines growing all over, weeds growing all over, and we'd lose the clarity of our mind. We never question ourselves. So at this point, I realized that maybe I need to intervene. So I asked them, all right, that I said, all right, if you're saying that the milk is that important for you, tell me who made uh, this world? So husband says, God, of course, he has been told to that God created the whole world. I said, so who is the ultimate giver uh, to this world? He says, God, God gives everything. I said, also, you realize all these uh, natural elements, the sun always gives, sun never asks anything from us. The air gives everything to you. The water satisfies your thirst. Earth out of all makes the food for you. Never ask anything in return. So do you realize that universe is in a giving state and not in a taking state? He says, yes, I realize that. I said, all right, let's come down to the cow. You think cow is a mother, right? He says, yes. Who do you think the mother makes the milk for? For the baby, to give the milk to the baby. So you would say mother is in a giving state? He says, yes. So I said, then in that case, where does that bring you in the picture? Are you in a giving state or you are in a taking state? He says, I'm in a taking state. I'm actually interfering and fulfilling the mother's conditions that she has to fulfill as a giving entity. And I'm interfering with that. I said, there you go. So suddenly he realized that what I am doing is against the laws of the universe. The law of the universe is to give, not to take. And suddenly he had some tears in his eyes because he was a very religious man 
But knowing that all these years he was told to believe that milk is good for you, he was committing some kind of crime against God. And suddenly he bowed down and touched my feet. I said, no, no, you're an elder person. I should be respecting you. He says, no, 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 but doc, Dr. Syed, you, you woke me up. You gave me a new vision to look at it. Thank you for that. So this is the condition. This is the problem of the mind. Mind is stuck up in, in this age old traditional thinking and we call them truth. These are not truth. These are relative truths. They are not even truths. We make them believe to be the truths. But sometimes once in a while, as Nitya Shanti said, the right question, when the right question is asked, suddenly it snaps you out of the, your confusional state that the mind is living. We believe the mind, we, mind doubts everyone in the world, but we never doubt our mind somehow. We have so much faith in our mind and that's the cause of our suffering. The suffering is not so much just that not knowing, but oh, there are things that you believe like such and such beer is good and you start taking it before you know have a cirrhotic liver, then you believe in certain foods which are very good for you, they're enjoyable and you end up with diabetes, cholesterol. And in this case, this lady was already on a cholesterol pill, still the cholesterol was running high. God forbid she did not have a heart attack, but even heart attacks happen and cancers happen. So that's when I realized that path of spirituality lies in going, ability to go beyond the mind. But going beyond the mind is not easy. Sometimes these situations come and these situations come if you are ready to grab on it it gives, it shakes you up. It shakes you up from within. So it gives you a new outlook towards life. And suddenly the direction of your life will change. So I was on a spiritual path. I myself was trying to go beyond the mind itself. It was not easy because meditation, I was practicing. I was reading a lot of books and books. I read every single book written by Chinman and all Upanishads, Kathopanishads, Kenopanishads, Vivekramani. I even read the book that Nitya Shanti mentioned, The Diet for New America. Fundamentally beautiful book. And it really gave me a lot of scientific background behind what I was thinking about veganism. I read the book, Victor Frankl, the, the searching the purpose of life for the, for the mankind. It's, it's the concentration camp that he was at. And he was faced with so much loss of his wife and children and family and his sister was the only one alive which she was not even around her and he didn't even know whether she's alive or not and he was a phd victor frankel he created a beautiful thesis on his work and he brought it with him to the to the concentration camp thinking that this was a great a great uh, possession that he was having uh, which was his intellectual possession he presented the thesis to the SS officer. And the first thing SS officer did was tore it up into pieces and threw it in the garbage. This is how much value of his intellectual wealth was. That put him into tremendous sense of agony. And he said that if my parents were not mine, they are taken away. If my children were not mine, if my wife was not mine, if my knowledge was not mine, what is mine? Then he realizes an answer from within. He says, the choice that I make is mine. If I decide not to obey to that SS officer and choose to die, there is it's still going to be my choice. So choice is something that springs from the consciousness. That is the ultimate holder. That is the choice that you can exercise. So this is how deep the spirituality is. It takes you to the holy grail where the choices can be made at the proper way, but we don't go that far. We hold on to the mind, which is making confused choices, wrong choices based on our perceived thoughts. And that's where the suffering comes in. So yes, we end up with all these diseases, wrong companies and and anxieties and stress and suffering, all those things are of course there. But I think the biggest loss is not realizing what lies beyond the mind. So I was in the process of going deeper and deeper into meditation 
trying to visualize the thoughts and see what it is. And I was getting somewhere, but still somewhere along the line, it was not easy. That's when came along the vegan diet for me. Vegan diet, again, I was looking for the best possible diet for my patients. And as I kept on studying it more and more and more with so many books and so much literature, I was realizing that at body level, of course, veganism is hands down one of the best diet, reduces your cholesterol, reduces your cholesterol, along with that blood sugars, reduces your weight. And of course, all these things will lead to reduction in your mortality from the heart disease. So this was a fundamental, my aim uh, to go into veganism. But as I kept on studying it more and more and more, I started reading these atrocities committed on the cows and the chickens. And I read all the stories on that, uh, the book, the, the, the Food for New America. So I read all these things and it was really stirring me up. But at the same time, deep inside my mind, I was still holding on to the desires. My perceived truths that yes, ice cream is good. What is wrong with that? Uh, candies are good, they give you pleasure. These are my experiential truth, not real truth. I was still holding on to it. I would go to the parties and I will still try to be vegan, walk home, but still I will have a split mind. One part of mine, majority part of mine wanted to be vegan, but some portion still did not let me go off. So as I was getting deeper and deeper into meditation, as I was getting closer and closer to the Atma, the soul, the softness, the, the tenderness of the soul was starting to be perceived little by little. And then suddenly a sudden shock came to me, just like the shock that I brought to that gentleman about making him realize what, where he was wrong. That sudden shock comes to you. And if you really pay attention to your life, these shocks are always there but we are not sensitive enough to perceive them because the shocks make you uncomfortable. And yes, being feeling uncomfortable is the job of the truth. The truth is always uncomfortable, but it is good because after being uncomfortable, it will define your path from that point onwards. So that uncomfortability is the generation. Vishad Yoga generated the whole Gita when Arjun was, was confused, he could not really understand what to do in life. That's when he suddenly turned to Krishna and the whole Gita opened up, thanks for the mankind. So uncomfortable, feeling uncomfortable, you should be able to perceive that it does exist and it always does. The mind is never unified. Mind is always dual. That's the duality and it always creates confusions on you. It always creates conflicts in you. Majority may want something, but that is always even a one-tenth of a fraction of a mind will say, come on, enjoy it, no problem. So as I was going down in my journey to spirituality, I came across the shock of artificial insemination. Somehow my mind kept on going into that spin. What is artificial insemination? It's making the cows pregnant without their consent. Now, at this point, as I was getting closer to the soul, the personal freedom, because soul is the ultimate freest thing in the world, that freedom, which you would want it for everyone. Democracy is the ultimate heart at the level of the soul. But that was bothering me that how can you make cow pregnant without its content, consent? There was a time when cows were roaming wild, the farmer would leave them alone with their natural instincts, they used to get pregnant. But now no more. All these industries, and like Nityashanti said, there is all over the world, the same practices are being conducted. Artificial insemination is a routine way of life for the, these innocent animals. That bothered me and something rebelled me. And then suddenly the whole hell, hell break loose. My mind disappeared, the soul took over. Soul says, this is the way it's gonna be. No more dairy products for you. And that day I became spiritual vegan for the first time. Until then, I was trying to be at the body level, at the mind level, but when the soul comes into the picture, all these frictions disappeared. 
and tremendous amount of peace came in my life. There was a time I used to go to the parties and walk home kind of empty handed that everybody was enjoying. I did not, inside, I still had a feeling of regret that I did not eat. All those things, frictions were always surfacing on my mind. But now, wherever I go, whenever I don't eat, makes me feel good because somewhere, somewhere along the line, there are cows which are benefiting by my choice of not consuming the dairy products. And whatever decision the soul takes, believe me, it will be good for your mind, which it was, and for the body and for the world. So for me, this was the two major pathways that came into life for me. And it was a beautiful combination of spirituality and the veganism. To me, this is like a Triveni Sangam, uh, which is the Triveni Sangam in Allahabad is one of the very holy place where Ganga and Yamuna get together. And there is a third river, Saraswati, which is hidden underneath, but nobody knows about it. It is there. The same way the combination of spirituality and the veganism opened up the Saraswati for me. The consciousness came to the surface. I became settled into the soul itself. But the soul is where the simplicity is. Soul is where the honesty is. Soul is where the truth is. Soul is where the freedom is. To experience a state beyond the mind is an amazing experience. Suddenly the Saraswati, Saraswati as you know, is the goddess of wisdom and goddess of knowledge. The soul is a combination of all these things and more. Soul is, is omnipotent, omnipresent. To experience the soul, the veganism, it became a stepping stool for me to take you to that level, to make me realize what atrocities as a human being we have been creating, committing on, our, on these innocent animals. Yes, there is compassion, definitely there. There is love there, there is karuna there. But these, to me, these are the byproducts of one most important thing, and that is the freedom. Atma is the freest substance in the world, in the universe or beyond that. Krishna says, I am the owner of crores of universes. Now go argue with Krishna about it. You can't. Your head just bows down. When you experience that infinite consciousness within you, there is no other choice. He's the only one who stays. You disappear. The freedom is the ultimate. That's why Gita says, Nainam chedanti sastrani, Nainam dahati pavata, Nacha kledyanti apoho, Nacha soshyanti marutaha. Atma, it cannot be dried, it cannot be cut, it cannot be vetted, it, it is free forever. This freedom is the first experience of the first characteristic of the soul. That to me is the spiritual liberation because from that point onwards, you will not be listening to the mind. Mind will listen to you because you now you know your path is clear. The clarity sets in you. That clarity tells you what is right and what is wrong. That clarity told me that veganism is the right approach. And that Triveni Sangam, just like the Christianity says, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit is flowing within you and within me. And that is very contagious because the same freedom that you experience yourself, like Mahavir said, you want the same experience for every single living being that has the same consciousness flowing within them. And that turns into ahimsa, that turns into compassion, that turns into karuna. So veganism is a beautiful, beautiful pathway to take. Yes, you will have advantages if you become vegan for a physical aspect, say, okay, you want to lose weight, you want to lose cholesterol, you want to reduce your risk of heart disease, fine, it's there, it is doing its job, no question about it. At the mind level also, you can practice veganism. Yes, it is good for the environment. You will do at your mental level, you realize that you have to reduce the greenhouse gases, the global warming, all those things are good. But believe me, when you hit the core of veganism, the core is the, is the simplicity. The core is the compassion, freedom for all. And that's why, that's how 
the our motto the world vegan vision says that be healthy be kind be vegan and spread the world everywhere you look at the logo you only humans are capable of perceiving this kindness and that to die without perceiving that consciousness that compassion within you and it cannot be practiced this is not a mind exercise that you can practice compassion practicing compassion is a fool's paradise compassion has to arise from within for that that's where you combine the spirituality and veganism for me it was uh, one of the best thing that ever happened so realize this go anywhere search any diets all the diets are there just to lose weight veganism is not about just losing weight it's about raising your atma raising your soul raising your spirituality and spreading it throughout the world for the betterment for the world betterment for your children now compassion you cannot even say that you are giving compassion to those cows or or chicken who are you to give they are the ones who are bringing compassion within your heart from generations and generations centuries and centuries they have suffered the least we can do is be vegan beyond that we have to thank them for raising our softness our soul that is floating and that is the ultimate goal of a human kind human life to realize what we are beyond the mind which is nothing but perceived notions false truth false truth and all those things that is a confused state of mind the soul is the clarity so please be vegan spread veganism and so much for today thank you